What is going on everyone? So this week's video is all about my backpacking setup. Now when you go on a backpacking trip with a large format view camera, it's gonna add a lot of weight and complexity to the setup. But on my recent trip, my pack was only 49 pounds before adding water. That is the lightest I've had it when bringing along an 8x10 camera. For those of you that are ultralight backpackers, 49 pounds might seem like it's quite a bit, but considering I'm taking along the 8x10 camera, the film, the lenses and everything, along with a video kit, as well as four days worth of food, uh, 49 pounds was, was pretty impressive. And even though the pack looks kind of big and heavy, um, a lot of it's just kind of bulky stuff in there that isn't incredibly heavy, and it was actually really, really comfortable, even on the very strenuous parts of the trail. So. Uh, it actually worked out pretty well. So let's talk about the pack itself. This is a Gregory Denali Pro. It's a 105 liter pack. I purchased this back in 2013. It is now a discontinued model. There's a new version of it, but um, I think I kind of like this design a little bit better. So I hope to keep this one going for quite a while. So there's several different sections in here. So there's a lower section here, which is meant for sleeping bags and other bulky things like that. There's a large section in the middle. There is the lid up top. And then there's also the saddlebags. You can see one over there. There's also one over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of those sections. I'm gonna show you what I stored in those sections and why I stored it in those sections. And let's start with the bottom part of the backpack right here. So the bottom of the backpack is great for lightweight and compressible items. So that's where I store my sleeping bag, down jackets and stuff along those lines. So first and foremost, this is my down jacket. Compresses down really nice and small. So that stores down below there. Um, as far as my sleeping system, I use a bivy from Outdoor Research. The areas I'm going, uh, the only reason I'm gonna go there is if it is really nice weather. So if there's any threatening weather, I'm not gonna be there anyway. So I'm not gonna be spending hours inside a tent during like a you know crazy storm going over. So this is mostly to keep the bugs out of my face. And in the event that there is like a little bit of a freak rain, um, spending a little time in a bivy is just fine, but I don't think I'd want to like endure a several hour long episode of rain in a bivy. It wouldn't be all that comfortable, but basically it's just a waterproof bag that you put your sleeping bag in. And in terms of the sleeping bag itself, what I use is a REI uh, Igneo Long. It's a three season bag. And when I transport the sleeping bag, I actually take the sleeping bag, I put it inside the bivy, and I take the sleeping pad, which I'll show you in a second, I put that inside the sleeping bag, put it all together, roll the whole thing up, and throw that in the bottom of my backpack. That way, when I get to the campsite, all I have to do is pull the whole thing out, just kind of lay it down, inflate the sleeping pad, and I've got a pretty good setup. So really fast to set up, really fast to break down, and then you also don't have to carry all these stuff sacks with you. Uh, the sleeping pad I use is from Climate. It's the Inertia X-Frame. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is not a very comfortable sleeping pad, but it gets the job done, keeps you up off the ground, so you're not gonna have the, you know, the cold ground kind of uh, sucking away all your warmth in the middle of the night. Uh, but it's, it's a really strange design. It's kind of like these bars and stuff. So I bought this when it was already discontinued. It was on clearance. And like I said, it gets the job done, but if I'm going to be carrying a little bit more weight with me, uh, the Thermarest uh, Neo Air setup is definitely much better. But as I said, it gets the job done. Uh, then a pillow. So this is the Thermarest Neo Air pillow. So good to bring along, a little inflatable pillow. And then my luxury item is the Eagle Nest Outfitters Sub 6 Hammock. So this is actually what I slept in on the, uh, on the recent trip. And it worked out really well. Super lightweight, super small. Um, the only thing is my sleeping pad didn't really work too well along with the hammock. So my back got a little cold at night, um, but maybe a, a more traditional sleeping pad would have been okay for that. Um, but it wasn't that cold on the trip. In worst case scenario, I could have just gone on the ground. And this is the suspension system for the hammock. Uh, so again, the bottom of the bag is gonna be lightweight, compressible things. So when you put the bag down, you're not gonna squish things, break things. And in the case of the trip I went on last year, there were some river crossings where I went for some swims at times when I wasn't really intending on it. But since I have the sleeping bag all uh, inside the uh, bivy, everything all rolled up in the base, uh, water didn't get to the sleeping bag, so it was able to stay nice and dry. 
But that's the bottom section. Next up is the middle section of the backpack. So it's important to keep the heaviest stuff right in the middle of the backpack, right up against your back. It makes a lot of sense because if you think about it, if you're kind of swinging around, the closer that heavy stuff is right to the middle of your back, uh, the less momentum it's going to have. So if you have heavy stuff up top or down below or further towards the back of the backpack, it's going to be a little awkward at times. So that's where I'm going to have the camera, the film holders, and also this bag that has all my lenses and stuff in there. So I'll start with this bag. This is from Tenba. This is part of the BYOB series. It's a nice uh, padded insert sort of bag. This is the BYOB insert 10. And this is where I'm gonna have uh, three lenses, my Arca Swiss cube head, light meter, stopwatch, basically all the stuff I need to work with a camera goes right in here. And I also really like that it has a handle right on top so you can pull it easy out of the bag. Um, and so it's, this is my lightweight kit. If I was not going backpacking, I have a much bigger bag I bring with the bigger lenses and stuff, but that one's nice and small. Next up are film holders. So I have five film holders I brought with me on the trip. These are made by Chamonix. They're wooden film holders, so they're fairly lightweight. But overall, it definitely does add up with a bit of weight there. And I have these really awesome uh, film holder sleeves from Dan Stone of Stone Photo Gear. Um, I love the fact that you can order them in a variety of different colors to stay organized. So in my case, I use red for Velvia 50. So you can see on the trip here, I had three film holders dedicated to Velvia 50 for six photos. And I had two film holders uh, for Ektar 100 for color negative film. So that was the ratio I brought. I probably should have done uh, one more Velvia 50 and one less of Ektar, um, but it's kind of hard to know going into the trip. But you'll find uh, Dan Stone's link down below in terms of his website to order the stuff. He makes really, really good stuff and it just gives so much more peace of mind in the field. And speaking of Stone Photo Gear, this is the case for the Intrepid 8x10 camera he just came out with. Uh, a nice, simple, lightweight case Again, you can order them in a variety of different colors. Uh, so it really helps keep the camera protected. And I can just kind of stack everything together there and it worked out really, really well. When I uh, did go on the trip, I did put these guys in a, uh, like a foil bubble wrap bag that came with one of the Amazon Fresh Grocery deliveries. And that way I can keep them together so they're all together and not sliding around inside the bag. Uh, but this is what's in the middle of the bag. Again, it's important to have stuff that is heavy right up against your back, right in the middle of the bag. It's just a lot more comfortable that way. The next area is gonna be the lid up at the top of the bag. So much like the bottom of the bag, you wanna keep the top area also very, very lightweight. Because if you think about it, if you have a lot of weight shifted around up there, it's not gonna be all that comfortable. So the top of the bag is where I store all of my food. So I use backpacking food, which is dehydrated food. All you have to do is boil some water, dump it in there. And the meals are surprisingly satisfying, though they're not incredibly calorie dense. Uh, each of these is around 500 calories. And if you have three of them a day, it's gonna be a little less calories than I need overall. So I definitely do end up losing a little bit of weight on the trips, but it is very filling when I'm out in the field. I also do make sure to bring along some granola bars for the times when I'm out on the trail hiking along and I don't really wanna set up and, and cook one of these. Um, but this works out really well. Again, very lightweight up top. And the thing that's really nice about the bag I'm using is that the top compartment is its own separate compartment. And it's just the lid of the bag that kind of hinges out of the way. So I can have everything in there. It's all self-contained and it keeps everything nice and organized. And if I want to get to the camera stuff, you just kind of open the lid and nothing's mixing around in there, which is, which is nice and organized, which really helps out on the trips. Uh, the next compartment is there's this front pocket in the front of the bag, and I'll show you what I keep in there. So one of the important things in the field is to have enough power to charge up my video camera batteries or my satellite messenger, or my headlamp, or my phone, or other various things I have with me. And for that, I use solar power. So this is from Goal Zero. This is a Nomad 7. I believe it's an older model now. I don't know if it's available anymore, but I'm sure there's something kind of like it now. This is the Venture 30 battery pack. And this battery pack will USB charge off the solar panel. And then once I get back to camp at the end of the day, this is fully charged and I can plug stuff into it. To charge my video camera batteries, I use this little charger from Sony. I have two of these. Put the battery in there, plug it in via USB and get a nice charge on those batteries. I can plug my phone directly into that. Also, I can plug my headlamp or my satellite messenger into that. 
So it works really, really well. It's not the lightest setup, but it's kind of the minimum I need to charge the stuff that I need. So next up are the saddlebags I carry with me. I'm gonna show you what I store in there. So I keep some of the most important stuff I need to access on a regular basis in my saddlebag. So I have two of these bags. These are long since discontinued bags from Low Pro, but the concept is pretty simple. Put a carabiner on the back, and then this will just clip onto the uh, front vertical straps for the shoulder straps. So one will sit on one side, one sits on the other side. Uh, it's a really clever design because I can just pull the bag up, get to everything, and then drop it back down there. So one of them has kind of like survival gear in it, then the other one has my video kit. So if I start with the first one here, open this up, uh, headlamp in there, easy to get to. Uh, this is one of two different water containers I bring with me. This is from Hydropack, it's a three liter uh, setup, really lightweight, very durable. Um, so where I go in uh, Southern Utah, the water can be very sediment laden at times. So I found that in the past by using various filters and stuff, they just get clogged up with sediment. So I've been using for the past few years are these little tablets from Ketadine and it's one tablet per liter. So that three liter container, just to put three of those tablets in there, then you wait about four hours and then you have good water in it. It just tastes mildly chlorinated, um, but there's no weird bad taste or anything, but super lightweight. I just plan ahead and I find that about six of these tablets a day is about what I end up going through. Um, the other stuff in here, I have a little sunscreen, a little hand sanitizer, and then I have my cooking kit, uh, which is from Snow Peak. So it's a titanium stove or titanium pot. And inside that is a uh, titanium stove. So really small, lightweight. Uh, this is a little base from MSR for the fuel canister. So it sits nice and solid on like a rocky surface in the fuel canister. And the titanium stuff is very, very lightweight. So that really helps out quite a bit as I'm just throwing everything on the floor there. And then uh, other stuff in there, a Full little spoon. And uh, this right here, which has a little bit of a history to it, this is a lighter that I purchased back in 2009. Uh, and uh, I've used this for, for many, many years for doing the all the cooking stuff there. And it's about, it's about halfway full right now. Um, I also have another fire starter tick with me, but this one's a little faster and easier. So I've used that thing like forever. So that's one of those saddle bags. And then the other saddle bag is gonna have my video kit in it. And I put this little guy right here. This is one of the things from Peak Design. I put this on here just so I know that this is my video kit one. And so in here, I've got extra batteries for my camera. I've got the camera itself, which is the ZV-1. I will not be throwing this on the floor. Got the little tripod uh, for the ZV-1. And then I've got the microphone. This is the Rode Video Micro for the ZV-1. And then also there is a little wallet in there with memory cards. Uh, so that works out really well. And then my other secret weapon for doing the video stuff, this is not made anymore. This is from Tamrac, the bag company. It's called the Zipshot Tripod. It's made of tent poles, very, very lightweight. I've had this thing since 2011. And this is the perfect tripod for the backpacking trips because it's super lightweight. Uh, reasonable height sets up. Um, it's hard to estimate, but it's it's, it's not a tall tripod, uh, but it's good enough height. And then the tripod I use for the 8x10, it's a one series Gitzo uh, Mountaineer tripod, and that is on the outside of the pack there as well. So that is all the stuff I bring with me on the trip. Everything from the large format gear to the camping gear to the video gear, power, everything else. So. Everything ends up being about 49 pounds, and then you add water, it adds a little bit more weight to it, but pretty lightweight, pretty darn good setup, and I've been very happy with it. If I start venturing into other areas, like to the Sierra or other places where there might be some more weather I have to deal with, um, I'd certainly bring a, a, a small one-man tent. I know Z-Packs make some pretty, pretty awesome stuff, so that might be my future as well. But I wanna thank everyone for watching, and we'll see you around next time. <laughs>